Although using spectral editing from within the VIP is very convenient, it's also fairly basic. But if you have the Magic's Cleaning and Restoration Suite, you will then have access to the Spectral Cleaning Offline Editor, which is much more fully featured. The Magic's Cleaning and Restoration Suite is available as a paid add-on. Although if you are a Sequoia 12 user, it is included as part of the package at no extra charge. This add-on includes the Spectral Cleaning Offline Editor plus five real-time plugins. These are the Declipper, Declicker Decrackler, Dehisser, Denoiser, and Brilliance Enhancer. These are proprietary plugins for Samplitude and Sequoia only. To open the Spectral Cleaning Offline Editor, first select an audio object and go to the menu item Effects, Restoration, Spectral Cleaning Offline. Alternatively, right click on the object and from the menu go to Effects Offline, Restoration, Spectral Cleaning Offline. This will open the dedicated Spectral Cleaning Editor which has an extended feature set compared to the basic inline spectral editing. I've created my own dedicated shortcut to open this editor. The editor has five different color options. These are Default, Contrast, Fresh, Black and White, and Fast. I'm staying with the default colour for this example. I have a loop I recorded from a vinyl record, but there are three clicks I would like to remove. The term range selection when using the spectral cleaning editor relates to an area selected when using the drawing tool. The drawing tool, pencil mouse mode, will be activated upon opening the editor. And this tool is similar to spectral mouse mode but with some advantages. One advantage is that you can select and process multiple ranges if required. As soon as I draw a range around a click, the spectral view for that range is modified. Use the bypass button to AB between pre and post filtering. I can adjust the range boundaries using the handles. Use the intensity control to adjust how much filtering you want applied to the selected area. 0% will give you no filtering. The higher the percentage, the more the click is filtered out. I'm now clicking the Calculate button and the selected audio is re-rendered without the click. If you have a piece of audio which has several similar clicks that need removing, the click markers can be very useful in speeding up this process. In this example I'm going to use click markers to help with the removal of the three clicks present in this audio. To add click markers, position the play cursor so it dissects the click. Then add the marker by left clicking on the middle yellow marker icon at the top centre of the spectral editor. Alternatively use the keyboard shortcut Shift plus C. All click markers will be labelled with a C. Now that all the markers have been positioned, I'm going to draw a range around just one of the clicks. The next step is to left click on the yellow Apply Range Selection to All Click Markers icon, which is above the Insert Marker icon. Now that range will be duplicated to the positions of the other click markers. Before pressing Calculate, it's advisable to make sure the Create Copy checkbox is ticked. This ensures the rendered file is saved as an effects file. 
Finally, press calculate and you're done. The three clicks have now been removed. You can move an entire range by left clicking anywhere within the range and dragging. To delete a range, just left click on the cross at the top right hand corner. Or click inside the range and press the delete key. You can also select multiple ranges. Begin by selecting the first range and control click the ranges you want to add to the selection. All actions will now be applied to the selected ranges. Although I touched on this earlier, it's worth repeating. You can also add click markers from within the VIP. Position the play cursor and then right click in the upper half of the grid and marker bar. Then choose Set Marker, Marker with Name. Type in an uppercase C in the text window. Now when you open the spectral editor, the marker will be present. Take note, if you wish to move markers in the spectral editor, they will snap, providing snap is enabled to the VIP grid resolution. But as usual, you can override the snap setting by using the Alt modifier key. To achieve greater accuracy when drawing ranges or placing markers, grab the Zoom magnifying glass tool from the top left of the editor. Then left click and draw a box around the area you need to zoom. Right clicking restores the zoom. Alternatively you can use control plus mouse wheel to zoom horizontally. Alt plus mouse wheel to zoom vertically. Or Ctrl plus Alt plus mouse wheel to zoom horizontally and vertically at the same time. A selection of calculation mode presets can be accessed from the mode left click menu. You can see that when I choose one of these presets, that the spectral view of the current active selection is affected. The default is crossfade. The other presets are Crossfade Hard, Crossfade from Left, Crossfade from Right, Gap, Damping, Fade In, and Fade Out. Please note that the last mode used will be remembered next time you open the spectral editor. It's also worth noting that any of these modes can be used in conjunction with the intensity control and the resolution presets. The intensity control can be used to adjust the wet dry ratio between the processed and unprocessed signal. You will also find changing the resolution can make a difference, but it is dependent on the source material. In general, I find a resolution of 256 seems to work best for removing clicks. Although, if you find you're having problems with a particular artifact, it's worth experimenting by choosing a higher resolution preset. In this example, I've selected some guitar string noise. You can clearly hear that the string noise is on the right channel. There are left and right channel display boxes at the top. This gives you the option to process either the left or right or both channels. I'm clicking on the middle Show Original Lightning icon. This displays the original spectrum while keeping the filter enabled. If I disable the right channel you can see there are no signs of the squeak. But if I turn on the right channel and turn off the left channel, the squeak is now revealed. 
Now when I press the calculate button, just the right channel will be processed. I'm going to use a similar guitar example to demonstrate the inverse function. I've selected the string noise area. I'm clicking the bypass button to turn off the filter. I'll turn it back on and you can hear the noise has been removed. If I tick the play inverse checkbox at the bottom, only the processed signal is audible. Inverse allows you to hear exactly what's being filtered out. You can then adjust the range borders so only the string noise is being affected by the filter. I'm enabling the show original button so I can see the spectrogram. Now I'm going to make some adjustments with the help of play inverse. Remember to untick the play inverse box when finished. I can now audition the edit in context. So now I can click calculate to process the edit.